Hey guys, um, I know you're probably wondering why you don't see my face, but that's because my computer has been acting really crazy and it won't let me show my camera. My camera won't work. So it's okay. We're going to still get things done by any means necessary. Um, hey, you know, we're just going to make it do what it do. Okay. So we're still going to go ahead and do our work. Um, shout out to the people who had 100% on their exit ticket yesterday. Um, again, that just tells me that you guys are really focused. Make sure that you're watching this video throughout so that you can do well in your exit ticket. So if you have not done your PDN, go ahead and stop the video right now and do your PDN. If you have already done so, then you can go ahead and just continue to follow along with me. All right. Let's go ahead and begin. Number one. Okay, sorry guys. All right, number one. Um, Jack watched TV all day. He is a couch potato. Okay, so I know that they're comparing Jack to a couch potato, but they're not using the words like or as, so this is a metaphor, okay? Next, number two, I can see that gossip travels quickly. Of course, we know that gossip can't travel. They're basically saying that it's spreading around, but it's giving it a human quality. So if you chose C, personification, you were right. Three, he was as brave as Superman for performing at the talent show. I see that they're comparing the guy to Superman with using the word as, so this is a simile. Number four, that spider was the scariest thing in the whole world. Of course, spiders are scary. I know, but they're probably not the scariest thing in the whole world. So we know that that is an exaggeration. It's a hyperbole. Okay, next, during Front Friday, outside is a recipe for disaster. I totally agree with that. But that's a little bit exaggeration because it wouldn't be a recipe for disaster, right? Um, but that's just a little bit of exaggeration. So if you chose hyperbole, you were right. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, number six. It was a perfect party in the parlor. So we see that party, perfect, party, parlor all start with the same beginning sound. And we know that that is alliteration. So if you chose alliteration, you were right. Seven, watch out. The car skidded to a stop just before we hit a tree, watch out. So we see that watch out and watch out are being repeated throughout. That shows repetition. And then lastly, number eight, the hard-earned penny fell into the jar with the clink. So we know that clink is a sound word and we know that any sound words are automatopoeia, okay? All right, cool. So if you guys got a 100%, super, super proud of you. Even if you got one wrong, I know that those were a little bit difficult. So let's go ahead and move on to our vocabulary word work. We're still working on prefixes, so we're going to go ahead and begin. All right. A prefix, we know, is an affix placed at the beginning of another word. A root word is a word that does not have a prefix or a suffix added, okay? Now, the prefix that we're going over today is X, okay? That is our prefix for today. And then change would be our root word, okay? So we know that prefixes have a separate meaning than the root word, and X means from and then change means one thing to another okay so um real quick let's just move this up so our little box can't come back okay um let's go ahead and so when we put x and change together we create the new word exchange and so um the definition for exchange would be Basically, to give one thing and receive another from someone. So you see how 
both of those um, words come together to make the new word, okay? So when you exchange something, you're giving one thing and you're receiving another thing. So let's go ahead and create the sentence. You can use my sentence or you can create your own. Miss, oh no, that wasn't my sentence. We love to exchange bracelets, okay? Good. Now, let's think of some synonyms and antonyms for the word exchange. When I think of the word exchange, a synonym is a word that means the same. I would say to give something, right? Or to even trade. Good. Now, an antonym would mean the exact opposite. If you're not giving something, you are. Good. I heard somebody say it. You're keeping it. Or you're taking it, which we don't do. We don't take stuff. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and look at our image. Um, so we can see that the man and the woman both have fruit in their hand, and they are, it looks like they're extending it out and they're giving it to one another. So how do we know that the man and the woman are exchanging gifts? Because it looks like they are giving and receiving from one another okay all right so guys remember if you if i'm going too fast you can always pause the video to write like don't think that you have to keep up with me if i'm going too fast okay all right so let's go ahead and move on to our board equals paper today guys we're going to be learning about rhyme schemes Okay, and remember guys that this was, we went over this a little bit. I kind of introduced it to you a little bit yesterday, but today we're going to formally go over it. So rhyme scheme, guys, is really easy. It's the pattern of rhyme using a poem, and it's usually written out in letters. Okay, now I want you guys to think of math. Think of like when you were younger, when you were like in kindergarten or first grade, and you learned about patterns, right? We know that patterns is something that repeat over and over again. So when we think about rhyme scheme in a poem, that's exactly it. It's a pattern that's going to keep repeating throughout the poem, okay? Now, I gave you an example below. As you can see, I highlighted the, end, the, the ending words of each line, okay? The words that have the same color rhyme. If they don't have the same color, they don't rhyme, okay? So all of the words that have the same color or that rhyme have the same letter, okay? We always start off each stanza beginning with the first letter of the alphabet, which is A. So roses are red. I'm going to give that an A because that's the beginning of my poem. Violets are blue. Now, as you can see, blue gets B, and that's because red and blue do not rhyme, so it gets another letter. My name is Ted. Okay, so Ted and red rhyme, so I'm going to give it the same letter, A. And I love you. You and blue rhyme, and so I give it the same letter, B. And so the rhyme scheme of this poem is A, B, A, B, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and put that into practice. Um, so here's the model. I want you guys to do it with me, and I'm going to try to make it as neat as possible with my little pen, okay? I found my shoe. Remember, anytime we start off a stanza, we're going to start it off with the letter A, okay? It was in the car. Hmm. Car and shoe don't rhyme, so I'm going to give that a B. How did it get there? Hmm, shoe, car, there do not rhyme. So guess what, guys? We're continuing in the alphabet, and I'm going to give it a new letter, which is C. I don't really care. Hmm, there, care, rhyme. So guess what? I'm giving it the same letter, which is C. Did you see my sock too? Hmm, I can see that two and shoe rhyme, and so I'm going to give it the same letter, which is A, okay? All right, and so the rhyme scheme for this poem would be A, B, 
B, C, C, A. Okay? A, B, C, C, A. And so if the poem was to continue on, it would be A, B, C, C, A, B, C, C, A, B, C, C. It keeps going over and over again. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and use a different color and let's move on to the next poem. Kip is a school. School is the first word and so I'm going to give it an A. If only we had a pool. Hmm. School and pool rhyme. And so guess what guys? What letter am I going to give it? Yes, I heard somebody say A because it rhymes. I would teach swimming class. Hmm. Class doesn't rhyme with pool in school, so guess what? I'm giving it its own letter, which is B. I think that would be cool. So cool rhymes with both pool and school, and so we're going to give that an A. And so the pattern of this poem is A, A, B, A. Okay? All right, moving along, we're doing really well. Again, guys, remember, if I'm going too fast, just go ahead and pause it so you can catch up. Okay, let me take a sip of my coffee. All right, let's move along. So, the next poem, My Cat is Nice. Remember, guys, we're starting off with A. My cat likes mice. Nice. Mice rhyme. Yep, you said it. I'm giving it an A. My cat is fat. I like my cat. So we know that fat does not rhyme with nice and mice, so I'm going to give it a B. But I do know that fat rhymes with cat, so of course I'm going to give it another B. Okay, so the rhyme scheme of this poem is A, A, B, B. Okay, cool. I'm going to give you guys a little time just to go ahead and get that down. Go ahead and try to do the next one on your own before we continue. Okay. All right, let's use a different color. Let's use orange. My friend is kind. Okay, we're putting an A. Remember, we always start off with A. She is similar to me. Me does not rhyme with kind, so we're going to continue with the alphabet and give it a B. She speaks her mind. Hmm, kind and mind rhyme, so I'm giving it an A. It makes me happy. So me and happy rhyme, and so I give it a B. This is probably one of the most basic patterns in a rhyme scheme. And so it would be A, B, A, B. Okay? Good. You guys are doing really well. Okay. Now, now we are going to basically put this into context with an actual poem. Um, so, remember, we have to always start off with our marking up our poetry elements. Now, I want you guys to go ahead and cross out number three. We're not going to do number three. So, um, let's go ahead. We have our stanza one. We have... Stanza two, and then we have stanza three, okay? And then make sure that you number your lines close to your uh, line because we still have to do the letters. And so it's going to be really hard to fit all of this in. So you kind of want to make sure that you're numbering it really close to the actual line, okay? because we still have to put the um, the letters. Uh, and it may stop, my video may stop, and so if it stops, I'm just gonna pick up with the second video, okay? 